Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to the Future History Project. This is uh, week seven, and uh, this week we we read or reading "I Robot to Protect" by Mickey Zucker Reichardt. It's the first of a trilogy, a Susan Calvin trilogy. <clears throat> it's sort of a prequel to uh, "I Robot" stories. Um, that uh, Isaac Asimov had written, uh, with a difference, uh, well, a lot of a difference. Uh, they've changed the timeline. She has just graduated university, uh, and this is in 2035. Um, which is out of the timeline that, that Asimov had uh, sort of established for Susan Calvin. Susan Calvin, uh, according to Isaac Asimov, was born in 1982. She went to uh, Columbia University in New York City for uh, robotics and then started working at the U.S. Robots and Mechanical Men. Uh, however, uh, that would make her starting to work probably, uh, at around the 20 teens. Um, so that's already passed, or this was, uh, current, uh, when this first volume was written in 2011. So I, I've tried to find out why there are certain changes in here and where the changes came from, but I can't, I can't seem to find any of that information. Uh, um, I'm assuming that the publishers, the editor, or somebody said, or maybe even the author, or all of them said, well, we can't, it's supposed to be science fiction, so it's got to be in the future. Well, really? Anyway, um, so I can sort of accept that. <clears throat> and, but in this timeline with her, with Susan Calvin, she did not go, to, or she hasn't yet gone, because there's still time, I suppose, to go back to university for robotics. But uh, she is starting her first year residency at a hospital as a psychiatrist, which is an interesting little twist from, you know, um, doing psychiatry, first of all, and then doing a robo psychologist. OK, that I can sort of uh, accept. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but there's other things in here that are quite hard to, to swallow. Um, uh, it's, it's not a short book. It's just under, uh, 400 pages. And I would say, <coughs> excuse me, 80, 90, 80% of it is taken up with sort of, um, uh, like the psychiatric history of a number of children and her sort of overcoming that. Like in the first half of the book, it's a bit, she's a bit un insufferable because she's perfect. Uh, she's figured out everything. Uh, somebody has mentioned to me, uh, it's like a Mary Sue character. Well, I don't really care for that labeling, but uh, <clears throat> I can understand that. Uh, it does change in the second half where she starts making mistakes uh, but robots are a little advanced in this storyline because there's already a human, perfectly, uh, adapted human, uh, for, for this, which sort of fits about right, I suppose. Like I've read a few, uh, reviews cause I was seeing, uh, what other people thought of this and, and the Mary Sue character sort of came up. Uh, and also, too, that uh, uh, somebody mentioned to me, a friend mentioned that it's uh, sort of uh, uh, like a house episode. And uh, I saw that mentioned several times as well. <clears throat> uh, because of the details, which are interesting in of themselves, but I'm not so sure if they fit or work within this within this book. It's as if the author, because she is a podiatrician and a physician herself, and it's as if she's putting in this stuff, she is interposing all of this. It's her writing, not 
Susan Calvin uh, writing. And the tacked on sort of, you know, romance thing, it's so badly, badly done. It's like a it's it's like a tenth rate Harlequin romance. And the name of the character too just almost it just made my eyes roll every time. And it's like his name is Remington. And she sort of flutter eyed at him and is he's gorgeous and all this and it's like like she's she's twenty five approximately and she's acting like a six year old. Um, and she is intelligent, um, and they changed one thing, which was fine, that her father actually works at, uh, at, uh, U.S. Robots and Mechanical Man, and she knew nothing about his, his life there, he never talked about it. Which doesn't seem quite right for Susan Calvin, because she's a very inquisitive, like, I would have thought she would have been an inquisitive child, she wouldn't have stopped bothering her father until he said something but okay willing suspension of disbelief she didn't do that she she had been orphaned or well orphaned her mother died uh, when she was young her father uh, and her and her mother were in a car accident and he survived but he's sort of he does have emotional trauma and so does she along with this uh, and they get into a little bit about that but, like, she never sees, he doesn't eat meals anymore with her. He cooks meals. And I just kept thinking in the back of my mind, it's not too late yet because there's two more books, but are they going to turn her father into a robot? Because we've seen this before with, uh, a ro you know, the uh, the uh, a a a attorney and then later mayor and then later uh, coordinator. Um What's his name? Uh, that's uh, anyway uh, that he he was uh, he is a robot. So uh, it's a little hmm, a little iffy uh, of of what they're gonna do with this. And the action finally gets going um, near the end, but there's very little robots. Like there is a robot, but a human a humaniform um, humanoid robot. Uh, that works at the hospital, and there is a lot about this, uh, you know, Society for Humanity, which we sort of hear throughout, you know, it, they are against, well, technology, basically, but robots in particular. Uh, so we get a little bit of stuff like that, um, which is kind of interesting, and, but it's sort of, everything ties up very quickly at the end. And it just doesn't seem real. Um, and as I say, it's just, it's too, like her whole character, like her character is somewhat what Asimov had written, but not, not quite because, you know, like they, like we, we, we don't see Susan Calvin in, uh, through Asimov's eyes until she's middle-aged. She's in her forties, I think. Uh, somewhere, you know, um, at, at the very least. Um, and she's very plain looking. She's single uh, or, well, ugly, as as people would say. But in this one, they're saying, you know, oh, she is pretty, you know. But then there is a couching thing of saying she has the prettiness of youth and freshness to her. It just, it, it doesn't chime. But, yeah, the, the, the sort of. Uh, romantic love scenes are just eye rolling and just you know unrealistic. Um, you know it's like every time she sees someone, her heart goes pitter patter, uh, the type of thing. And uh, you know she's she's better than her, you know, um, you know a neurosurgeon. She's figured out something, and she get you know all this kind of stuff. It's it is the Mary Sue type character. Uh, but all that being said, I'm going to uh, pursue uh, pursue with this and read the other two. And definitely uh, for next week is, uh, what is it, To Obey, I think it is. is the I think the, uh, the second one is To Obey. I actually won't say in here because this is the first edition. Um, but yeah, it'll be the second one. Um, 
and we'll see where it goes from there. And it sort of, I think, continues on from this. There's a few interesting things, and I, I kind of wonder, because I, I looked it up too. Uh, she's working at a hospital, Hasbro. It's the Hasbro Hospital, and it's Hasbro Toy Company. Because they do mention about toys and stuff like that in there. Um, there's no sort of authorization or trademark that I can find in this book on the on the copyright page, which I'm finding it really, really difficult to to believe that they were able to use this without acknowledgement of Hasbro. Um, yeah, I just don't. And like I say, it's a work of fic, uh, fic, uh, fiction. Names, character, places, and incidents either are the product of the author's imagination or use uh, fictitiously. And any resemblance to action persons, living or dead, uh, uh, business establishment, events, or localities entire coincidental. But you're calling it, is that how you get away from it? You're calling it Hasbro and saying, oh, but it's not anything to do with the toy. It just happens to be another toy company that is put up money in the name for a hospital. Um, anyway, like that's not a big thing, but it's just, I wonder, like it's not in print anymore, this book. And I kind of wonder, and I thought I'd maybe find some information. Did they just not get uh, okay to use that and then Hasbro would sort of clamp down on it? Don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, but it does show something that, you know, that companies that like that are, it's happening. And, you know, uh, medical institutions would be called at hospitals or, or other places, you know. Uh, there's other things that, like, like, it doesn't really jive for the fact that... Uh, you know, in 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 uh, twenty thirty five, like they had to put it in twenty thirty five. If that's the case, I, I this is a pure supposition here that we can't put it contemporarily because there are no robot robots now. So we got to put it in the future because it's the future. The problem is that future is so close that it's going to roll by anyway. So it's never going to be in the future unless you go so far in the future. Um. So I I don't quite understand that but then the other things like she the, the way she names things they have sort of like a which she calls it a palm press or something like that and it, it's it's just a little like it's almost as if it's a mobile phone it's a uh uh a tablet or a pda type thing and they've got these watches vox they call it, it it's 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 like it's a computerized uh connected to the internet watch and phone and everything and this is 2011, she's writing this. Why is she using these names like as futuristic things and nothing? And nothing? It's like, you know, I don't think tablet is, is a registered trademark. There were tablets that are PDAs. And from 2011 to 2035, they're still going to be called tablets. I, like, I, I, like, you know, well, the chances are that they'll still be called tablets. You know, it's not like 1950s to now because they wouldn't know what was happening. This is 2011 to 2035. Whatever's in 2011 to a certain extent is going to be around in 2035, or at least the names for things like a mobile phone here in the UK or a cell phone in the US. They're still going to be called those types of things. Um, yes, they didn't have the iWatch or whatever it is in 2011, I don't think, anyway. Um, so that's, that, that's a little different. So fine. They, they call it something else. I don't know where, why they, she chose Vox. Uh, but yeah, some of the names are just like palm press. Like it just doesn't roll off the tongue. Well, you know, uh, it just doesn't work, uh, so much, but anyway, those are just minor little, little things that, that, that I had with this, uh, but it's it's the main thing of the character, and she's just too perfect at the beginning. And then all of a sudden, it just switches, you know. Uh, and yeah, well, that's that's what I signed up for here <laughs> to to read these. So, and I do, uh, you know, there's at least one person that has made a com uh, comment that he couldn't go past chapter eight. I'm not sure where that was. Um, that's about halfway through, basically. But, yeah, that's about where she starts making mistakes. So, um, yeah, it was like a hundred and some pages in, uh, or just over a third of the way through. 
but yeah, uh, so uh, if you're sticking it out, then uh, congratulations. I'll be sticking it out. Uh, as I say, I'll be reading the second one uh, next week. And hopefully we can get through these quickly if they are all bad uh, in that. Well, bad is a relative term. Let's just say not as good or as I hoped they would be. Um, but that ha didn't hasn't happened with the other uh, non-Asimov stories we read too. So the only other ones that I read were the Second Foundation trilogy. And I want to reread those. Uh, those were interesting. Um but uh, but I, I this may not bode well for the rest of the uh, non uh, Asimov material, but we'll see. So again, this is a project that uh, you can dip in and just read some things. You can read the non Asimov stuff if, if that's all you want to read, or just read the Asimov, or just read the robots, and then or the Empire stuff, uh, or the Foundation material, or the original Foundation material. It's, it's so wide there. There's so much that can be read with this. So uh, I, I do appreciate those sticking it out um, and reading uh, it all the way through. Um, and I'd like to know what you thought of this book uh, and uh, the characterization of Susan Calvin. Uh, do sound out in the, uh, in the uh, comments. Uh, as I say, I'm not that big of a fan of it. It will not be something that I'm, I don't think I would reread unless it all of a sudden changes in the other two books. Uh, like a lot of the reviews that I read, people were saying that they'll just never read anything else by her at all after uh, finishing this book. Which is understandable. She's not a very good writer. Um, technically, she's okay. She puts sentences together, uh, you know, in a coherent manner, but uh, it's just not well done. Let's put it that way. Anyway, I've, I've disparaged enough about this, uh, so I'll end the video there, and we'll continue on next week. Take care, book two.